Yeah. No, I got it, I got it. I know how to put together a chair, okay? I'm sorry, could you say that again? Oh, we're back? Oh, so we are. Sweet. Alright, thanks. Yeah, we're good, we're good. See you later, Professor K. Jet Set Radio! So, what do I think about Jet Set Radio? Well, I definitely think that the game is a bit old, and the age kind of shows in certain parts of the game. Some of the pro some parts of the game are good, some parts of the game are bad. Excuse me. So let me do my best to tell you which parts are good and which parts are bad. I'm not going off of any script this time around like last time. When you first start the game, you're able to get a pretty basic handle on how the game works, how the spray paint stuff works, how to control your character. And when you start doing actual levels in the game, once you get past the tutorial stuff, you start you start to realize how fun the game probably is. You're trying to escape from the police while spraying your tags, and it's pretty fun. It gets more challenging as the game goes on, but then it gets di more difficult the more you go, like most video games. It starts out easy, then it gets more difficult as you, as you go on. When you start trying to, I guess, be careful in the game, I guess that's when I notice some of the problems. For example, one thing I notice is that when you turn your character, even if you're going as slow as possible, it's always in the sh in the same wide turning radius. You could be you could be just snailing along, and you'll still be forced to make that wide turning arc instead of being able to stop on a dime. Most of the time, in video games, your turning radius is based off of how fast you're going. If you're going fast then your turn goes into a wide arc. But if you're going slower, you're able to turn more on a dime. Not with Jet Set Radio, it's always... like, you can only turn so sharply, even when you're moving slow. And this kind of sucks considering that the brakes is slamming back on the control stick, or the opposite direction of what you were moving in. And if you're just, instead of going in the opposite direction, if you're slightly off to the side a bit, then instead of stopping, you're just going to go in that wide turning arc again. And one problem I had was trying to do a little bit of platforming, like, if I try to stop on a small platform up in the air away from the enemies, and if my analog stick goes in, like, to the left or to the right at all, instead of just stopping on that small platform, I'll just roll straight off onto the side. And that's frustrating. Um, something that I found actually dumb was having physical exits to the levels in the game. Why would you put physical exits in the levels when there is already a return to garage option in the, in the pause menu? I actually got knocked out of a level because of a hazard. I got hit by a car in Shibuya Cho. I wound up landing on the car and it drove me straight out of the level's exit. That is bad game designing. At least in my opinion. If it was an open world, like Jet Set Radio Future, then that would make more sense. But you always have a time limit. And to make it even worse, it's not always cre clear where you're allowed to go and where you're not. Because you could see in my gameplay earlier that at certain points I would go, oh, this wasn't open before. Or, oh, these are connected now. I would always think that a sort of loading area of any kind would possibly be a 
an exit to the level. So that's why I got lost. Every area that looked like an, uh, a sort of loading area, I would worry that it was an exit to the level and I would try to avoid them, but over time I would learn, I guess, somewhat through trial and error. Like, oh, okay, this is an exit. I don't want to go, go this way. Oh, okay, this is another area to the level. That's kind of annoying. Because when you first play the game, the first time around, you're not able to figure out what's an exit and what's another part of the level. And it doesn't let you know, hey, this area of the level is now available. There's more sprays over here. Because at certain points, I was running around in circles like, what do I do? I think I thought I got them all. Oh, there's a new area over here? Oh, come on. That gets frustrating. When you get to... I want to call it the halfway point of the game. When the Rokuku group replaces the police in the game, that's where it gets much more difficult. Because the enemies become much more ruth ruth ruthless in the game. Especially on the level Fight or Flight. Good gosh, that level was a pain. I didn't know just how much of the level existed the first time around. And on top of that, when the jetpacks start coming out of nowhere, you are screwed. You're basically forced to resort to speedrunning tactics just to complete a large tag without getting shot at. Or at least hope that you don't get shot at. And when you get to the final boss, sure, it's a bit challenging, but when you try to deliver the final blow, good gosh, you're going to have a difficult time trying to freaking get that tag on his chrome dome. Because the whole time in the final boss, that giant record is spinning at high speeds. You have better luck trying to swim up a waterfall. Ugh. But I do have to say, the story for Jet Set Radio is definitely entertaining and fun. It tells about kids in the streets, but not in a ghetto way. Just a bunch of kids skating up the streets, spraying up their tags all over the place. The first half of the game, basically, is about all these different gangs and their territories. Like, you got the GGs, you got Poison Jam, you got the Noise Tanks... You got the Love Shockers. Basically, all of them trying to fight for territory. And the GGs start coming out on top. And then you got the Rokuku group with this demonic record coming into play. And that's where the game gets more difficult. But the story, thankfully, kept me going on. And as far as the music go for this game, good gosh, I love the music. A lot of the music is definitely catchy, definitely fun to listen to. Other songs didn't grab me the right way. Uh, one of those songs... One of the songs in the game had... a singer somewhat mumbling, uh, mumbling the lyrics, and I don't know what they were saying. It made me feel uncomfortable. Just... just but... When I heard that remix of Rob Zombie's Dragula start playing, I lost it. Because that is an epic song. <laughs> I actually recently watched a, a, a Did You Know Gaming episode, and apparently they specifically had that remix put in the game to appeal to the Western audiences. As well as the level it wound up playing on. Um... I have to say, though, as awesome as the music is in this game, it's also a problem, because almost every single video in this Let's Play got copyright claimed. In fact, let me show you. See? All of this... All of these videos in the Let's Play got copyright claimed because the music in this game is copywritten. And that's a pain. You can't always have good music in video games because one, you gotta, like, pay for it. It's all copyright and bullshit. And on top of that, people can't always make videos of these games because of the copyrighted music. In fact, if I ever do wind up uh, live streaming Rocket League on Twitch, I'm definitely gonna have to use my own music or music, and by that I mean music from 
video games like Sonic or something, because I don't know if the music in that game is copywritten. It, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for both YouTubers who want to make videos of these games and people trying to make these games to begin with. <sighs> Overall, Jet Set Radio is uh, difficult to really judge. A lot of people like Jet Set Radio, and by that I mean the original, despite how difficult it can be. Personally, I'm not that much of a fan because I had so much difficulty playing it. Everyone I've spoken to about Jet Set Radio always says that Jet Set Radio Future is better. And I'm inclined to believe them. I mean, after all, it's it's a remake that was built from the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a remake that was built from the ground up. And in Jet Set Radio Future, you can actually defeat the enemies. The police, basically. You can defeat them, which is already a step up. You have a rocket boost which helps, because something else I forgot to mention about this game is that trying to accelerate in this game is seriously difficult. <clears throat> Sorry about before. It's like there's an unseen cooldown in place that doesn't allow you to really spam the accelerate button or hold it down or whatever. It's hard to really gain some speed in this game because it's old. But Eventually, I'm sure you will get a pattern down, especially if you start using the same character. Like, I started using Beat over and over and over again, and I started to notice a sort of pattern where I could somewhat spam the, uh, the accelerator. Or, to go faster, basically. So, do I recommend this game at all? Yeah, I guess so. It's definitely something worth playing. Um... Wouldn't write home about it too much, especially since there's an obvious better version out there. What bugs me though is that I don't I don't think we're ever gonna get a port of Jet Set Radio Future to the PC, and the reason why I say that is because of the licensing bullshit. Jet Set Radio is filled to the brim with all kinds of copywritten music, and that's probably the main reason why we won't get a PC release. We won't be able to see Future on Steam. In fact, I'm pretty certain that certain songs actually had to be cut from this game just to let je the normal Jet Set Radio on Steam. Well, at least I had some fun with this game while it lasted. And hey, if you want to listen to Jet Set Radio all day long, I know just how you can do it. JetSetRadio.live is a website basically made by fans. And it's basically a website that recreates Jet Set Radio. Hold your butts. It's time for Jet Set Classic. Let me just mute that for now, because I do not need any more copyright bullshit. There is all kinds of things on this website. Different radio stations. It plays tons of music at random. You can click this button right here to skip to the next song if they're playing something you don't like. There's so much you can do. The TV, Jet Set Radio TV, basically, they show all kinds of videos related to Tokyo, skating, graffiti, the wall. Uh, if you're going to check out the wall, I suggest you make sure your kids are not in the room because there is a possibility of porn appearing on the wall because it's, it's open, it's public. People can post whatever there. Chat, it's a chat room, and there's all kinds of different options you can do as well. Like, cha like, change the background picture to just colors and even make it a rainbow. This, if you're a fan of Jet Set Radio, I definitely recommend checking out this website because it is definitely made by Jet Set Radio fans for Jet Set Radio fans. And that does it for Jet Set Radio. I'm kind of relieved to be done with this game now because, oh my gosh, it was difficult towards the end. And having my channel jacked by Professor K, kind of frustrating. Thankfully, he gave control back once the story was told. Ugh, I need to take a vacation somewhere. Hmm, Possum Springs. Looks like a nice place.
Yeah! 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 